and don't forget to pray you know no matter what you do put your prayers first work hard especially the ladies work hard you know be determined and focused so that they won't come and say you're spending any man's money you know so that no man can sit on your happiness as well so yeah now just a few weeks after giving this advice to the women of ghana prominent ghanaian influencer mona faiz montraj aka mona for real aka hajia for real was arrested in the united kingdom for fraud and subsequently has been extradited to the United States of America to face charges with regards to the role that she played in a romance fraud scheme. This case is still ongoing, it's actually breaking and it's still ongoing and today we are going to look into the details of the case as has been laid out by the US authorities against this woman who in Ghana is well known, very prominent, and she does a lot of things. She has her hand in a lot of pies. She's a social media influencer. She's a brand ambassador for some brands actually. And she's also a budding musician who was actually getting to the peak of her career. This is the true crime story of Mona Faiz Montraj, aka Hajia for real, aka Mona for real. And I must reiterate again that she has not been convicted yet. As it stands now, it's just an indictment. But we are going to look into the details of this indictment and break it down and take it even further to let you know more about this lady if you already didn't know. If you are ready for this true crime story, just buckle up and let's go. Say, say, say what? Hi, lovely people. I miss you so much. And I know you miss me too. Thank you so much for your prayers. I really appreciate it. I love you all. Say, 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 say what? <laughs> so the video you just watched was of Hajia for real, or let me say, Mona Faiz Montraj, thanking her fans and supporters for having an unflinching loyalty to her when her arrest in the UK came out. So at this point, it was, it was more about it is so, it's not so. We had people coming from her camp to tell us that it was something else and that the facts would come out later. All this while, we decided to stay back and watch the case unfold because one thing about the justice system is Eventually, all the dust will settle or clear and the facts will begin to stand out or the accusations will begin to stand out as has been put out legally. And as of today, May 15, 2023, it has become clear that she has been charged for her role in a romance scheme and has subsequently been extradited from the United Kingdom to the United States of America to face her charges. Say, say what? Hi everybody, it's your girl Mona Faro and I'm super super excited about my first EP ever. It's going to be premiered at the Silver Bird Cinema Accra this Thursday. Make sure you come and let's have fun. Come let's party, come let's watch all the seven videos. And also it's going to be available on all the digital platforms on the 15th of October, this Friday, guys. I can't wait for you to hear it. Say, say, say what? <laughs> it is alleged that she received over $2 million in fraud proceeds and pretended to marry one victim to further the fraud scheme. Now, the information we are getting is not from the grapevine. This is coming directly from the United States Attorney's Office website of the Southern District of New York. And I think it's likely to be credible. So this is the information there and you can check it out for yourself. So Damien Williams, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York and Michael J. Driscoll, the Assistant Director in charge of the New York 
field office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, that's the FBI, announced the unsealing of a six-count indictment. And in this indictment, they charged Mona Faiz Montrach, our very own Mona for real or Hajia for real. And sorry, I forgot to mention, she's based in Ghana, West Africa, and so am I. So she's an act I'm familiar with. She's an artist I'm familiar with. She's a musician in this country who has done quite a number of songs, although she debuted as a musician not that long ago. So you could see that she had a promising musical career. But as of the 15th, the unsealing of the six count indictment took place and she has been charged for her role in a series of romance schemes and for laundering the proceeds of those schemes. Like I said, she was originally arrested in the United Kingdom on November 10th, 2022 and then subsequently extradited from the United Kingdom on May 12, 2023. She will be presented before US District Judge Paul A. Crotty, to whom the case has been assigned. So this is it. The dust seems to have settled now. We are going to go into the facts of the case when the trial or the prosecution starts. But Per the communique put out, we are going to bring you the facts detailed in that communique. So, the US attorney said, and I quote, As alleged, Mona Faiz Montrage was a member of a criminal conspiracy that specifically targeted older Americans through romance scams. These scams can be both financially and emotionally devastating for vulnerable victims. Thanks to the efforts of our law enforcement partners, Montrage was arrested abroad and has been brought to the United States to face justice. Think this is clear cut. And yeah, sorry, quote closed. And I think this is clear cut. So she did she allegedly did the act, and then after investigations, they've caught up with her. Now FBI assistant director in charge, that's Michael Driscoll, went on to say, I quote, We alleged today that Miss Montrage participated in multiple romance scams, often targeting elderly victims, resulting in more than $2 million in fraudulent funds under her control. Romance scams, especially those that target older individuals, are of major concern. The FBI will be tireless in our efforts to hold fraudsters accountable in the criminal justice system. Foot closed. So, as alleged, per the report in the indictment and other publicly filed materials, so from at least in or about 2013 through in or about 2019, Montrage is detailed to be a member of a criminal enterprise which was based in West Africa that committed a series of frauds against individuals and businesses in the United States, including romance scams. Let me pause here and break it down further. We are in 2023 and it's like the whole thing is coming to a head, so to speak. But Take note of the timelines being mentioned here. This investigation didn't start in 2022, although she was arrested in 2022, November, in the UK. It seems the investigation started somewhere around 2013, or at least from that point coming, because they are able to establish that within that time to somewhere 2019, she was actually a member of a criminal enterprise. I'm of age and I remember vividly a lot of things that happened in 2013 in the entertainment circles and in the socialite circles of this country. But honestly, I don't remember knowing anything about this lady at that time. I'm unsure whether she was in the country at the time or she was somewhere else, but it's been established in the indictment details that she was part of this enterprise operating out of West Africa. So I'm sure that 
in this time she wasn't so much in the limelight as she is now but per this allegation she was actually underground doing these things with this so-called enterprise now many of the enterprises romance scam victims were vulnerable older men and women who lived alone now this enterprise frequently conducted the romance scams by sending the victims emails text messages and social media messages that deceived the victims into believing that they were in romantic relationships with a person who had in fact a fake identity assumed by members of this enterprise now once members of the enterprise had successfully convinced victims that they were in a romantic relationship and had gained their trust they would then allegedly convince the victims under false pretenses to transfer money to bank accounts the victims believed were controlled by their romantic interests when in fact the bank accounts were controlled by members of the enterprise now i don't know where you are watching this footage from but all over the world yeah i think it's that widespread now all over the world i can confidently say at least you may know of someone who has fallen victim to this or at worst you may know of someone who knows someone who may know someone who has fallen victim to this type of scam it has become a very very public scam now and it keeps metamorphosing into different versions as the years go by not to talk of other people like hash puppy who has had his own version of his scam not so much into this but in other forms as well we have a video of him in our playlist in case you have not yet heard anything about him just go to our playlist and look him up you see him in there another crazy guy from africa specifically nigeria but again the fbi caught up with him too and as we speak he's languishing in jail in the united states of america back to the substantive case so montrage is a Ghanaian public figure who rose to fame as an influencer through her Instagram profile under the username Hajia For Real, where at one point she had approximately 3.4 million Instagram followers and was among the top 10 profiles with the most followers in Ghana. So she was budding, and you should see her, she has the natural flair. She looks like the type of person who, who doesn't have to do much to get attention because she has the natural beauty. That's not to say it's bad or body shame her in any way, but that's just to say that she is blessed in that way, if I'm to put it that way. I'm, I'm a fine babe and I'll show it off, okay? If you have a problem with that, don't buy data. So it wasn't surprising that a social media account was getting that type of traffic and loyalty from fans on Instagram especially and she also had the flair and she had seemingly the wealth to flaunt in her fashion and other things that she, she put up so her, her, her content was alluring to the public and so she rose to prominence on social media as one of the key Ghanaian figures on Instagram to be specific. Montrage received money, allegedly, from several victims of romance frauds, whom, whose members of the ent enterprise tricked into sending money. Among the false pretenses used to induce victims to send money to Montrage were 1. Payments to transport gold to the United States from overseas. 2. Another form of it was to demand money as payments to resolve a fake FBI unemployment investigation. Well, <laughs> this FBI investigation is real. 3. Payments to assist a fake United States Army officer in receiving funds from Afghanistan. So these are not like your everyday stories. So to an extent, especially back then, it could be believable. and. As a true crime channel, I've come to realize that there is so much evil in this world 
sometimes if you are too good-hearted if you are so innocent people begin to take advantage of your innocence and good heart such that these stories could be believed by somebody just out of the goodness of their heart but before the person would know it's a scam they would have actually taken advantage of the person's goodness and dupe the person of some cash so then ask yourself if this person falls victim and happens to meet a genuine person next time who is in genuine need do you think this person having been a victim of a scam already will be in a position to extend a helping hand no most likely and that is how come i believe some people are becoming so unempathetic these days because some of them have fallen victims to schemes like this and they've just concluded that the best way to protect themselves is just to decide not to help anybody at all that's my view let me know what you think in the comment section now as to one victim montrage was alleged to have used a real name and spoke to the victim several times by phone montrage sent the victim a tribal marriage certificate reporting to show that montrage and the victim had been married in ghana the victim sent montrage approximately 82 wire transfers totaling approximately 89,000 US dollars to purportedly help with costs associated with Montrage's father's farm in Ghana. Hmm, this is interesting. So, in total, Montrage is alleged to have controlled bank accounts that received over two million dollars in fraudulent funds from this fraud enterprise. Montrage, who is currently 30 years old and was residing in Accra up until she moved to the UK and got arrested and now extradited to the United States, is being charged with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, one count of wire fraud, one count of money laundering conspiracy, and one count of money laundering, each of which carry a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. Additionally, Montrage is also charged with one count of receipt of stolen money, which carries a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison, and one count of conspiracy to receive stolen money, which carries a maximum sentence of 5 years in prison. The maximum potential sentences are prescribed by Congress and are provided here for informational purposes only as any sentencing of Montrage will be determined by a judge. So, going on, the outstanding work of the FBI were praised and the United States Marshal Services were also acknowledged. So was the National Extradition Unit, United States Customs and Border Protection and the FBI Legal Attaché in London all for their assistance in the investigation. Now, this case is being prosecuted by the office's Complex Frauds and Cybercrime Unit. And I'll be following this case keenly to see how it goes. But hey, this has come as a very big surprise to a lot of people here in Ghana. And some people are divided on this issue. That's not to say it matters what they think because at the end of the day, the facts are the facts and the law is the law. And I'm waiting to see how the prosecution or the trial will unfold so that we know what is and what isn't and which allegations are true and which of them may not be true. But before we bring this video to an end, let's just take a little deep dive into the background of Mona Faiz Montrach, aka Mona for real, aka Hajia for real, so that in case you didn't know, you will now know more about her. So, Mona was born and raised in Tamale, and Tamale is in the northern part of Ghana, alongside her siblings to a Ghanaian mother and a Lebanese father. She had her elementary education in Tamale before proceeding to Laboni Senior High School for her secondary school education in Accra. 
She then moved to the U.S., where she studied at the Art Institute of New York City, majoring in fashion and design. Now, in July 2017, Mona launched a women's cosmetics brand with the name For Real Beauty. She also owns an event and entertainment company based in New York. The company specializes in event planning, multimedia production, and talent management. And this company gained prominence after it organized one of Accra's biggest end-of-year party called the Global Wave Party in 2016. So, to her music career, she released her first single in November 2020 titled Badder Than. And this song was produced by Ghanaian award-winning producer MOG Beats. In January of 2021, she released her first, sorry, she released her song single Fine Girl, produced by Kwame Eugen, another musician here in Ghana doing awesome. And in May 2021, she released a third single produced by MOG Beats, which featured Ghanaian YouTuber Bujo Sheldon. The following month, she released her fourth single titled Baby, which featured dancehall musician Shatawali. On the 6th of October 2021, she announced the tracklist for her upcoming Maiden Extended Play or EP. The seven track EP featured top artists including Shatawali, Stoneboy, Ifia, and Medical, with the tracks being produced either by MOG Beats. Richie Mensa, Mix Master Gazi, and Street Beats, who are all award-winning producers. The EP was released on the 15th of October 2021, with six of their respective videos being premiered on her For Real Entertainment YouTube channel. In 2022, Hajia For Real, or Mona For Real, was nominated for Best New Artist of the Year Award and her music video for her song Fine Girl was also nominated for Best Music Video of the Year at the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards 2022. She released a dancehall single titled Blue by Mona in 2022. She held herself named Maiden Concert in December 2021, which she featured other known Ghanaian musicians. Mona For Real got into the limelight initially for her relationship with one Ghanaian businessman whose name I will withhold, but eventually they parted ways in 2015, and she has a daughter whose name I will withhold. Not so long ago, she celebrated her 30th birthday, and the pageantry was awesome. There are some people who have opinions about all that has unfolded, and I'm going to share them here. That's not to say I agree with them, but I'm just putting them out here. So, there are people who believe that the pageantry that she's shown at her birthday may have also attracted some attention. Don't forget, as was the case in Hash Puppy, the social media affluence and flaunting of wealth to an extent is alleged to have also helped draw the attention of the authorities to how much he was flashing cash out there. It's unclear if it's the same in Mona's issue, but some people are of that opinion. I'm in the middle on this one because I don't have the details. Again, there are some people who are of the view that this allegation or these crimes she's alleged to have committed were probably something she did in her past when maybe she didn't know so much better and that she currently was trying to change her life and get on the good path and do things right. So maybe leniency is in order but there's another group who say this and this is a fact actually that crime does not expire. The fact that somebody has committed a crime and is trying to change his or her ways does not mean that the person should be forgiven of the crime or treated with any form of leniency contrary to whatever sanctions the crime warrants. That is a fact. That's not to say she's guilty because, mind you, 
this is a criminal case and in criminal cases like all other court cases you are innocent until proven guilty and most likely the prosecution would have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that she's guilty of these offenses brought up against her like i said earlier i'm keeping my fingers crossed on this one and i'm following this case all the way i'll bring you updates as and when they are due but leave your comments in the comment section whether you are watching from ghana the us the uk wherever you are i know i have viewers all over the world what do you think about this case what do you think about this lady you can look her up on social media check her out on youtube she's all over doing awesome music i'm not really a fan but i admire the work she put in her craft to an extent subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so it's actually free in case you didn't know leave a comment in the comment section share this video and like i always say stay safe out there and keep an eye out we'll catch you next time